Well, the worst kept secret in NASCAR has now been made official. Shane Van Gisbergen will race full time in the NASCAR Cup Series in 2025 for Track House Racing. Yeah, it's a great day for the company, uh, obviously, uh, being able to announce that we're expanding to a third full time Cup Series entry in 2025. Um, and most exciting thing for me about it is that uh, we're able to announce that Shane Van Gisbergen is going to be the full time driver in the Cup Series for us. Next year at Track House, as we expand from two cars to three, and and you know these are these moments are are always uh, special, especially since you know 48 months ago, um, this was a Tennessee limited liability company with $500 in the bank and sort of an idea, and me and Ty trying to figure out how to do it. So um, you know for us to uh, come in as a one car team in 2021, um, you know make the acquisition of Ganassi, expand to two teams, uh, win you know seven races in the next you know two and a half years after that. Um, and then, you know, have some great, great partners come on and just sort of continue this amazing, amazing journey of building a great company here. This is obviously a huge moment. So i um, really, really thrilled and excited that, that Shane, you know, put the trust in us and, and you know, made a huge commitment in, in leaving a very successful career in Australia, New Zealand and moved to a new country and sort of start over and uh, put his, his faith and his trust in us uh, means means a lot to us, and he's put in a tremendous amount of work. Um, great, uh, great human being, very, very talented race car driver, and somebody with an incredibly, incredibly bright future. So we're we're very excited to have him here. It's also kind of unique about this is that this is a this is a neat moment for for Project Ninety One. I mean, you know, Project Ninety One was you know it was a program to bring incredible talent from around the world to the nascar cup series and see if we could do something special with it and obviously you know with shane going to chicago and and you know being the first uh, first winner in 60 years on on debut in project 91 and then you know make the move over make the commitment to xfinity series this year and a bunch of cup races and then be able to turn that into a full-time cup series ride in, in 2025 is just a really cool moment in the story of of project 91 so we're we're very excited uh we're thrilled that he's uh he's accepted the offer and made the commitment and uh looking for big things in uh, 2025 so over to you my friend yeah yeah thank you yeah afternoon everyone it's um it's been pretty, pretty awesome um, 18 months, I guess now, and yeah, it's been a huge life change, as, as Justin said, and um, yeah, everything he said was going to happen has, has happened, so yeah, I'd never, never thought it would happen this quick, and I'm, I'm very glad we've done, done the learning, learning year this year in Xfinity, Call of Racing been great to work with, and, and then also a lot more races to finish the year now, but it's been a huge learning experience, but just excited to get full time in the Cup Series next year, and working with Trackhouse and how fun that's been this year, the way everyone goes racing, the attitude in the place, and it just resonates from the top with, with Justin and, and Ty, the leadership there. It's, um, yeah, you just feel it through the place. It's a really cool team to be a part of. And um, yeah, hugely excited about it. Got a lot of work to do and, you know, it's, it's not gonna be easy, that for, that's for sure, but I'll, um, I'll keep pushing and yeah, hopefully uh, fit in pretty good next year. Can't wait. Yeah, Justin, just a couple of things that have um, come over, come across in the last maybe even 30 days is talk a little bit about as you look at Trackhouse Entertainment Group now and you look at all the different regions of the world that are now represented under that banner. Yeah, I mean, that's that's definitely, uh, um, you know, an element to the story here that's that's uh, we take a lot of pride in. I mean. You know, we have we're going to be full time cup racing next year with three cars with drivers that are born in three different countries, which I think is a pretty amazing thing for this sport. It's an amazing thing for for where motorsports is today, and and you know we're we're thrilled and honored to be stewards of um, of you know inter international diversity, the top top level of, of motorsports. I mean, I've, I've said this a couple of times now. You know, with MotoGP uh, and our MotoGP lineup next year and our Cup Series lineup next year, Trackhouse has a roster of athletes that represent Mexico, New Zealand, the USA, Spain, and Japan, which is, which is a pretty incredible thing for, for a motorsports company. And we take, uh, take a lot of pride in that. So, um, you know, we just continue to tell, tell a great story, um, you know, try to get really great people in the house with, with diverse backgrounds, great stories to tell, uh, compelling personalities, and at the end of the day, just really, really dedicated hard workers. Yeah, Shane, for you, just coming over here and, and, and you, you're racing against people you've never met before. And I uh, remember when we were in Chicago, um, you were trying to read the names on the back of the windows just to remember you know, <laughs> who you're trying to race in that, that corner. Um, you talk about a, a year later, now that you've been around these guys and how much you've learned and also some of the respect that you see between you, yourself and some of these other drivers. 
think that goes both ways. Didn't you have to Google me when Justin yeah. brought my name yeah. up? <laughs> yeah. It's, <laughs> yeah, it's, you know, it's a, it's a different world and it's, uh, you know, you're still car racing, but it's a completely different sport. And um, yeah, as I said, learning so much this year and got two recent examples of people, I guess, come through Marcus Ambrose and, and Juan Pablo, similar backgrounds and, Juan did, you know, three or four races in Xfinity and then full time into Cup, and Marcus took it the slow route. So we're kind of in between, and I think the way we've done this is the right way with all the processes. And even though the Xfinity car is very, very different to a Cup car, I think it was 100% worth it. Learning all the tracks, all the places, the terminology, metric versus uh, Imperial, that's been tough, but it is, you know, it's it's a massive learning year, and um, yeah, but just I just got to keep building on it and and keep improving every week and had a little kind of setback, I guess, in, in Xfinity losing our crew chief. But, you know, we've got to get that momentum built up and I'm still fully focused on getting a great result in the playoffs and, and keeping that momentum into next year. So, yeah, it's pretty exciting times. So one other element to this is as you expand the team, um, you have to dig deep and start thinking about, well, what what's going to be the number? And... How do you take this into the next level and in, in something of some relevance? And so I want Shane and Justin to go over here, and we're going to unveil the number. So any photographers around? Let me, let me yeah, let me just say one, one thing about that before we before we unveil the number. One of the things that's important for Travis, I mean, the numbers are important. Numbers are important. They're a big part of the branding in the sport. Numbers represent history, um, and and they represent you know legions of fans and, and historic drivers and historic moments in the sport. And I think you know. We don't take our number choices lightly. And, you know, when we chose the 99 car to begin with, there was a responsibility that came with that. And, and that's, you know, with wins with Carl Edwards and with Jeff Burton and a lot of, a lot of great drivers. Same thing with the one with Kurt Busch and Jay McMurray and a bunch of drivers. And, and when, we think about, when we think about the numbers and we think about our history and the number, it's important for us to honor that history. And it's important for us to add to the winning legacy of, of that number, which we've done with the one and we've done with the 99 and we intend to do with the new one. For those who can't see it, it's the 88. That's for the, for those of you in the press box. So, um, you know, Justin, do you want to tell a little bit about the process of this, you know, having, you know, wanting, wanting to do the right thing and talking to the Hendrick group, talking to Jeff Gordon, talking to, uh, to the Earnhardts? Yeah, I mean, when we, you know, I called Carl Edwards when, you know, in the end of 2020, and I said, we're starting this cup team. We run, want to run the 99 number, and I want to, you know, tell you that we're doing this and, and obviously get your endorsement of it and get your support for it. And we did the same with the one and, and we've done it with, with the, uh, with the 88 and talking to, uh, to the folks at Hendrick and, and to Dale Jr. who I was just texting an hour and a half ago. And, and, you know, it's important for us to, to have the endorsement, a great, great exchange with Dale Jr. saying like, look, it's, it's not my number. I mean, it's, I added to the legacy of it. I, it was, it's important to me personally, but, but you know, he was, he was proud to see it in good hands. And that's just something that's, that's super, super important to me and to this company. Yeah, I got a phone call from Jeff Gordon one day and he says, you talked to me about it, Marshall, about it. I know you talked to Dale Jr. Have you talked to Kelly yet? Kelly Earnhardt. And I went, no. And he goes, she's the boss. Call her now. <laughs> and so I want to thank uh, Dale Jr. and Kelly for, uh, for letting us in. And, and, and there's you know, some amazing drivers attached to that number. And so it, it is a lot of responsibility and, and we, we certainly accept that. So we're going to open it up uh, to some questions here for the next uh, five or 10 minutes. Greg Engel, Forbes. Um, too quick, what was the trigger that all of a sudden said, we need to do this? Did you have a goal, you know, like last year and say, well, if we get to the certain point, we'll go to the third team? Or was there just a trigger that says, yeah, now this time's right? Well, I've always thought uh, that, you know, three teams is a really strong number of teams to have in this sport. I think that, you know, it, it you know, just gives you 33% more of an opportunity on the racetrack every weekend. Um, and, you know, frankly, it's, it's, you know, four car teams are reserved for really, really, really big companies in this sport. And it's, it's tough to make four cars work. And, and so I think three was kind of, you know, always, always sort of the number for us from day one, if things kind of went our way and we could grow from one car to two, that, that three was, three was kind of the goal. And then, you know, an opportunity came up to be able to expand to a third car for this year. And so we took it. Thank you. And Shane, for you, good on you. Now the pressure is because now you're there, right? This is what you, when you won back in Chicago, you said that this was your ultimate goal next year. It's going to be you're, you're a full-time cup driver pressure. Do you feel pressure? Are you motivated, excited, happy, kind of anxious? What? All of the above, yeah, but that's why we do it. You know, I've learned those feelings are, are good things because it means you care so much about it, right? So 
all this year I've been nervous getting in the car, anxious, how's it going to go, how am I going to be, and that's an awesome feeling and something I haven't had for a few years. So it's been really cool to be energised like that. And, of course, there's going to be pressure. You know, the Cup Series is pretty cutthroat. It was, as we've seen, you know, a lot of guys, it's, it's pretty hard to make it. So, yeah, i just got to keep learning, doing the best I can, and, and I'll, I'll be fine. One more element that uh, is always important to a team is who's going to who's going to lead it, and um, uh, we're very very fortunate to announce, and it's in the release as well. Stephen Doran, who's here today, is going to be the crew chief on the uh, number eighty eight uh, track house entry next year. Um, so uh, great history, champion uh, of, uh, in his own right, and uh, you know we walk into Daytona five hundred, we come back here next year, we'll have three drivers starting that race who have won NASCAR Cup Series races, and so you know you feel pretty good about your chances coming in. So we're going to go to Bob, who is raising his hand, then Jordan, and then back to Lee. Um, Bob Packers for Explore, Fox Sports. First, Justin, can you confirm where you're getting the charter from? What would you guess? I would guess Stuart Haas <laughs> Racing. <laughs> he probably, probably not a bad answer. Okay. And can you talk about the decision, or what was an easy decision? You know, you had more drivers than you had spots, so you had to announce yesterday that you released Zane. So take me through maybe decision to keep Shane and well, I mean, I, I think when we decide the drivers, it's a it's a big picture, and we cast a wide net of of sort of qualifications, and and it's you know it's like, you know, we just uh, it's commercial support, it's fit in the company, it's personality, all of that, and and um, you know it, it's uh, we, we can't we don't have four cars, we have three, so we had we have to make a decision. We're we're excited about the decision that we made with uh, with SVG. So actually, Chris Knight has a question from the press box they asked me to read. So with all your endeavors and connections in other motorsports arena, is there a concentration on where you'll find the next driver to potentially bring to NASCAR? Concentrate, like from a, I don't know, I'm asking you like you asked the question. <laughs> um, Let me rephrase it. With all of your experiences and all the things that you've created out across the world now, the, wide, the, the net is extremely wide. Is there like a is there a target? I guess is I think is the question that Chris is asking about where you look at look for drivers these yeah, days, not, not just in the Xfinity. Yeah, area. I don't I don't think uh, we're in the driver looking business really um, right now for a while. I mean, we're we're excited with Ross. We're excited with Daniel. We're excited with SVG. Really excited about. Resigning Raul Fernandez and and bringing the young Ayogura from Tokyo Japan into the MotoGP thing, and then we've got an amazing talent who's going to be racing next year full time in the Xfinity Series in uh, in Connor Zilich. So we've we've got um, I think we're in we're in a pretty good spot right now. I mean I think we, you know, as the as the business expands and you know we're able to expand to the third team and and you know have these opportunities obviously it was important to make sure we, we, we put an emphasis on putting ourselves in the best posi position to get the you know the best talent in the house so um i think that we've uh, you know we've done that and now we can focus on what we've got and try to go win races all right jordan jordan bianchi the athletic uh kind of following up on bob's question can you give a, a a number an exact number or at least a ballpark number on what you paid for the charter no in occurring negotiations with the charter agreement and everything, um, there's, there's been some debate on whether to continue to invest in teams. Why inquire third charter until – why not wait to acquire until third charter until the negotiations are finalized? Well, because I don't, I don't really have any stress at all about the fact that the charter system is going to continue. I mean, I don't, I don't really think that that's a risk. And when there's an opportunity, um, you know, to, uh, to make a move and to and – to, um, and to expand and you know there's we got a lot of great commercial support around this program that we'll announce um later on this season i mean there's just a lot of things falling in line we had to take advantage of of the that opportunity when it was here and uh, before we lost it so um it wasn't really that difficult of a decision i mean you know the charter negotiations will continue those conversations will continue to happen um i think the charter system has been good for the sport i think nascar will t tell you the same thing um we don't really have any stress about about that system continuing Hey, Justin, uh, Chris Gallen with News Daytona Beach. Um, so I have a, a little bit of a two-part question. Number one, the news came out yesterday that um, Zane Smith and Trackhouse were parting ways. Um, so I'd want to ask, uh, for one, what, did this come down to a Zane or Shane decision? No pun intended. And um, number two, if you know, if it didn't, um, what I, I was wondering if you could describe what made you pick Shane for this seat over some other, you know, drivers who I'm sure were in consideration that, you know, maybe had a little bit more experience in NASCAR specifically? Yeah, the, the way I'll answer this is that um, th this moment right now is about Shane Van Gisberg. This is an SVG moment. I'm going to keep it an SVG moment. I will tell you that the, the, re the reason that we chose to go with, with Shane 
um, for this third car is is that you know he yeah there's there's not a lot of experience in the Cup Series. Um, there's some unknowns. Can be a lot of lot of hard work, but you know Shane checks a lot of boxes. I think for a really really compelling story and building a great business in this sport. And it's the fact that you know he's incredibly talented. He's incredibly dedicated. Um, you know there's a reason why he was the first one to win on debut since Johnny Rutherford in 1963. That's not that, that's a big thing. And you know for him to be able to you know obviously the Chicago Street Race is kind of in his wheelhouse. But I mean, the, the rate of adaptability of everything else, just the competition, the restarts, the pit stops, the way he prepared for that race is like, man, this is this is a superstar. And this is this is somebody that we, you know, we were really excited about committing to knowing that it's, you know, it's relatively unconventional path to a cup car. Um, but we wouldn't be doing it if we didn't think this guy could win lots and lots of cup races and be a playoff contender. So, um, you know, it, it was honestly a, a pretty, pretty easy decision because um, he just checked a lot of boxes for us and everyone in the company is really excited about it. Good. Lee, do you still need anything? Shane, what has been the hardest part about your learning curve, just trying to get up to speed? I mean, you come out and, you know, in your debut win, and, you know, you think it's all going to be pie in the sky after that. But what has really, you know, challenged you along the way? Turning left. <laughs> 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 um, yeah, it's just, it's just there's so many variables in this racing. You know, you see... Even Kyle Larson, who's the best driver, he's first one week, 20th the next. You know, there's so many variables that make this sport a thing. You know, like I'm used to being on one line, the repetition the whole time and just hitting my marks where the race can change so much over the course of the day. When the weather changes, the rubber goes down or even the super speedway racing is completely different. So probably just the amount of variables in this racing and, you know, you can prep all you want, but it's having those instincts to adapt and learning how best to do it so every race I'm learning something and you know I, I seem to always start the races quite slow and you know by stage three I'm, I'm on the pace kind of thing so yeah just every week and this time of year going back to tracks I've been to before hopefully I can show that improvement and and you know keep getting better but yeah as I said every week it's I'm like a sponge trying to learn stuff and get better and better and, and do you expect to run any Xfinity races next year mm -hmm. Yeah, I'd hope so. Like, um, obviously, there'll be, you know, speaking with Chris and, and the calling team, you know, there's opportunities to do the road courses. But, you know, for me, that's that's easy stuff. I want to do more ovals with them and, and learn in both ways. So, yeah, hopefully we'll race with them next year and win some road courses. But hopefully they'll let me do some ovals too and I can keep um, getting more experience. We have time for one more. And uh, it, it, go ahead and ask uh, this question was right here. Sorry, Dustin, we were down to one. So. And he's been right here. Mike's right here. Zach Sterniel at NASCAR.com. Um, Justin, for you, Project 91, you mentioned the importance of that kind of right off the top. Do you anticipate that continuing um, moving forward with a th full three-car roster? Or does that do you feel like that stretches the, the team too thin? Well, we're having those discussions right now. I mean, I, I think that Project 91 is something that that 100% in my mind I'd love to love to continue. I mean, it was just it's difficult to do it this year because we have so much on our plate with you know sort of supporting other drivers and other programs and um, you know and just just a lot of sort of business development stuff that we're working on. But um, but we we you know I, I would expect Project 91 to be back sooner rather than later. I think that obviously it has to fit in the workflow of the company. I mean, like we're expanding our focus is on running three competitive Cup cars next year. Um, but there's a lot of interest in Project 91, both from drivers. And, and from commercial partners, so um, so yeah, I would I would 100% anticipate that to uh, continue in some capacity. So the great thing about uh, doing this stuff on race day is um, so many of you are here and a lot of attention. Uh, however, there's also a lot of other work. So we're going to cut it off here. Uh, we're, both these guys are going to head right back into the garage. We have a lot of partners here, which is uh, really the fuel behind this company. So thank you for your time. Appreciate it. Thanks for the questions, and uh, and uh, we'll see you guys again soon. Thank you. Cool. Thanks.